Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I'm going to continue the little series on basic integration. In this video, I want to go over definite versus indefinite integrals. So this will be a fairly short video. I just want to go through an explanation and a short little uh, example of it, or two little examples. So let's see. So we have a review from the last video. I have a link in the description box just over basic integrations. This is the the rule of, of integration or the method of integration. What you have here is you have uh, the integration, the infinite sum, and the function of x raised to the n, and the differential of dx. So this is said uh, the, to integrate f or integration of x raised to the n dx is equal to the quantity of 1 over n plus 1 times x raised to the n plus 1. So what we're doing is we're taking the exponent, taking the exponent, adding 1 to it, and then dividing by the new exponent of n plus 1. And that is the basic way that we learn how to do integration. Now I told you, I showed you in the last video, again, where I have the uh, link in the description box, there, there was a plus C, and this is how and why we have a plus C. It comes from the fact that there are actually two different types of integrals that I want you to be concerned with. One is going to be represented by an indefinite integral. And what that is, is an integration where there are no boundaries, no limits on it. So, so we're looking for that same area underneath the curve, you know, the area underneath the curve that you see here. And over here, so the area underneath the curve, you know, and that's the function under the curve. And, you know, we, uh, what we're doing is we're looking for that area underneath. And when we take that integration, we're going to, we're not going to have any limitation on it. So we're looking at the area completely underneath the curve. So what does, goes into an indefinite integral? Like I said, there's, there's no boundaries. So you're looking under the entire function. Also, you're not find, the solution that you're going to get from this is not going to be a number. It's actually going to be a function. And that function is going to represent a family of solutions. And that's where that plus C, that constant of integration, comes in. Because you don't know exactly what family in that whole family of solutions you're looking for. You just have to be prepared to know that it is a, uh, one solution in a family of solutions. Or so you're trying to represent the entire family of solutions. So just to give you an example, we have the integral of the square root of x with respect to dx, or dx. So what do we do? We're going to go back to this rule that we uh, spoke of. And we're going to apply it to this function and take the antiderivative. So first thing we can do is we can put this into a, a little easier uh, way to handle it, a little easier form. So we're going to take, instead of square root of x, we're going to raise it to one half of x. So rewrite the equation x raised to one half of x dx. Now we're, now is when we're going to start following the rules. So we have the exponent here which is one half. We're going to add one to it. So one's going to have to be represented as two over two. So you're going to add x to two over two. So you're going to get x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, or as you can say, 2 thirds of x raised to the 3 halves. And then we have this plus c, because we don't have a number, we have a family of solutions. And that constant of integration lets us know that we are dealing with a family of solutions. So we don't, so this is just a function right now. And that is actually the solution that we're looking for with an indefinite integral. We have no boundaries to it. Now the next uh, type of integration I want you to look at is a definite integral. Now the difference between this one, you know, these two curves, is now you've got a function versus this one where you have a function. You've got, you've got this function here, f of x, f of x, but now you've got boundaries going from a to b. So we're not concerned with just the area under the curve. We're concerned with the area under the curve in this very specific area, bound by a and b. Okay, and that has a, a slightly different procedure to it. So here's what goes into a definite integral. 
So you do have boundaries. And in the example I'm going to show you, you know, it's going to be, we're looking at something with a boundary from x equals 0 to x equals 4, you know, a to b on the x-axis. So a definite integral has boundaries, and it actually does result in a number. Where indefinite integrals result in a, in a function, a definite integral results in a number. So you will actually get a quantity here. So let's look at this example again. So we're going to take the definite integral going from 0 to 4 of x uh, square root of x dx. So same function, but now we have boundaries on it. We're giving it a definite integral. So again, we put it into a, you know, an exponent form with an x raised to the 1 half. We still follow the same rule, you know, of x raised to the n dx is equal to 1 over n plus 1 times x raised to the n plus 1. So this is going to happen, but because this is a, a definite integral, we have a definite limit to it. So we're going to go from 4, which would in this case would be b, the higher, to 0. So we're going to have to look for this area here. So we're going to uh, take the integral. Essentially what we're doing, we're taking the integral from, you know, in two places and taking the difference between the two. And that's going to close off that area that we're looking for. So what we end up with is we actually go follow that rule. So we end up with 3 halves, x raised to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, or 2 thirds times x raised to the 3 halves, minus 2 thirds x raised to the 3 halves. And we're taking it, you know, it's a boundary between, whoops, 0 to 4. Yeah, let me fix that. 0 to 4. And we just say this, draw this a little bit better. Okay. 0 to 4. So we're looking at it from 0 to 4. So we're going to substitute 4 into the first x and 0 into the second x or into the second function. Think of those as two, you're taking the difference between two functions. And that's what the boundaries are. So you got 2 thirds, substitute 4 for x, raised to the 3 halves, minus 2 thirds, substitute 0 for x, raised to the 3 halves. And so that's only, this entire portion of the equation is just going to go to 0. And we end up solving for the first function, which is 5.33. And that is because it's a definite integral. We end up coming up with a solution that is a value, or in this case, it's a number, and it's 5.33. So that is the difference between an indefinite and a definite integral. Indefinite integral, you'll see this a lot with just... Uh, run mill dis differential equations where you're trying to come up with a mathematical model. Indefinite integral, or excuse me, definite integral. You often see this in physics questions, uh, a lot of chemistry, a lot of uh, you know thermodynamics, and this is where you actually have a limit. You're trying to find out how much an object may have moved or how much something may have changed through a period, uh, you know, between A and B. So this is Professor Cummings, though, just a brief description of what the difference is between definite and definite integrals, how to solve them, and you know what to look for. Thanks a lot.